you may already know that the default without physics can lead to bad performance and incorrect behaviors. That is, when using an external physics add-on appears as a promise alternative, and the old physics is the most known and most used plugin for this work. As you can see, the comparison between without physics and YOLT is amazing. YOLT can handle much more elements and their behaviors are better as well. Today, we will get to import YOLT in an empty without project and start using it with a simple example as the one that I showed a second ago. So, let's get started. So, let's start with the installation process. I will be leaving a link in the description so that it is much faster for you. That basically will... Uh, direct you to the Godot assets library assets and basically here you have the Godot YOLT okay so now that you are here you're going to click where it says download and wait a couple of seconds until everything is correctly downloaded now I really recommend you to take a look at the repository of YOLT basically to have more details and information about uh, this add-on so you can go ahead and, cl and click here where it says view files and basically here if you scroll down you will find a pretty detailed uh, document that contains everything related to how to import this add-on, how to use it, etc. So I really recommend you to give it a look. I will also leave the direct link to this repository in the description down below. Now that you have it over here, what we're going to do is to select it and we will actually have to extract this. Okay, so it may, it may change here the process a little bit depending on your operating system and depending on the software that you already have installed for extracting files but it is quite probable that you have WinRAR installed so if that is the case just right click over there you should have here some WinRAR option and here some option to extract the files once that you have them you will have here the folder so let's open it up we are going to open this up once again and here we have the good old YOLT add-on now let's actually have the setup of YOLT in good old. So basically I have here a, an empty good old project and I will import this add-on. So basically here I have this folder so I will basically drag and drop it here on my file system. I will give it a second and basically I will have here my good old YOLT. Now let's actually enable uh, YOLT basically to use this as the physics engine for the project. So we'll go ahead and click on project and then on project settings. Make sure that you have advanced settings on and scroll down here a little bit until you find the physics section. And here you are also going to be finding the 3D option. In the physics engine, you have several options to select, one of which is basically YOLT Physics 3D. So basically click on it and then you will need to restart your project in order to apply this change. And basically after restarting, if you go again to your project settings and scroll down until physics 3D, you will see that your physics engine is going to be YOLT physics 3D. And basically after successfully completing these steps, you have successfully imported YOLT into your Godot project and you are up to start creating anything that you want. Now I have already created here a project for us to test out, so we'll have a quick project overview. So basically in this project what I have here is two platforms, okay, with also some colliders you can see to avoid some balls from basically falling off the platforms and just a floor, okay. Besides that, I have pretty simple nodes to have some lights and some world environment to actually be able to see things um, properly. And I also have a simple UI with the time that has passed since we started playing, the amount of balls that have been instantiated and the current FPS. Here in the scenes folder, you're going to be able to find here the ball scene. That as you can see is basically a rigid body that has some physics, a mesh instance of type sphere, and a collision shape to be able to collide with the uh, walls that we have created over here. If we take a deeper look into some scripts, you are only going to be finding two. We have the ball script that basically the only thing that does is assigning a random color to the uh, mesh material just to basically have different colors for each of the balls and in the main scene i basically have the spawn rate of the uh, balls and basically i'm doing all the logic to correctly spawn the balls and to update all the necessary ui okay the code is super simple to understand now let's basically get started uh, with some benchmarks 
Uh, first, it will basically use the good old physics 3D, and here I will do some remarks. Because you probably already know, we already have also the default physics engine. But basically, they drop the exact same results that have been, mar been marching for quite a long time. And basically, the final conclusions that we can get to are super, super similar, okay? Um... So that is why it doesn't really matter which of these two you use because the results that you're going to get out of the benchmark is going to be quite similar. So as soon as we get started with this, as you can see at the bottom of like the platforms, they start to get quite like they start to vibrate some some something related to that. And also, for example, here, as you can see in something close to like. Uh, 100 1200 volts like six seconds literally the game can't run anymore so it's quite a low amount of volts and a low amount of time to like being able to run the program for now let's actually do the exact same test basically just playing the game but now we're using yolt okay so i have it here on my project settings set to use basically yolt physics and let's get started okay and see how much time we can survive and how many balls can be instantiated okay until fps start to drop okay and first you can see that here we're in the six second mark and we still have amazing fps and well yes when we have something like 10 seconds and 2000 balls we uh, start to have uh, some issues with the performance however i really want to remark over here that we have literally no balls vibration over here okay and that is amazing so remember that here when we were in like 1200 we are already lagging and here we are in almost 2000 uh, particles and still we had more than 30 fps okay and that means that yolt can basically handle something like 2000 elements of this uh, of this class at least uh, so that is also a, an amazing result for yolt physics so yes for sure we do have here an amazing winner that is uh, Yolt physics because the difference between both is of course super super big and also here quite an important thing is the fact that in Godot we have like some kind of vibration there uh, on the balls at the bottom of them but on the other hand Yolt physics behaving in a much more realistic way without having there some kind of bounciness or vibration that would make the physics less realistic and leading to misbehaviors now i also want to give you some kinds of clarifications to avoid leading to some misunderstandings okay first of all the rigid body that, that i have been using wasn't modified in literally any other aspect that the ones that i i must needed to use basically for example here having physics materials to add some bounciness and uh, having here continuous cd to avoid uh, misbehaves in terms of collisions so i didn't change any other options such as the dumping the gravity the mass etc so everything was created with the default options and i didn't either modify here uh, the old settings that we have over here so let me look for them here in sorry in physics 3d we have some options that uh, we can modify so basically i didn't modify any of this so everything was with the default parameters, okay? Because of, of course, Godot still has a quite an interesting physics engine. Of course, Godot has here lots of functions that you can modify and probably, for example, delete that, that vibration over there. But the important point here was to play, was to just have a project that you can play around with, with the everything with the default values, okay? Because when an engine, when an add-on, when something works by default, in the way that you want to in the most accurate way for most game mechanics it means that it is better generally uh so that's also the thing that i want to that i wanted to clarify because then of course i'm sure that if you toggle here some options you are going to easily be able to delete that kind of bounciness that the ball had or here the with the friction or some kind of those things okay then no, no, i'm not going to get deeper in this uh, video because that's not the idea but well at least it was quite important for the video to be clarified this so basically in this video we were able to compare a little bit the good old physics with the old physics and now well you have the decision to switch from the default good old physics uh to the old physics okay to be honest both are pretty good physics engines i would really uh, anyway recommend you to use yolt because it is even better we have seen it will uh, really help you get around with uh, performance issues because it is much more uh, performant it also avoids some kinds of default misbehaviors that still the physics engine will have because 
like historically good oats has had problems with physics okay they are still doing an amazing job to be able to release a better physics engine they're always doing some updates to it but well still until today i would say that your physics is much much better and also the benchmarks also demonstrate that so if i were you i would have no doubt and i will and i would use the old physics and then in the future if they release some kind of update to the good old physics and actually maybe it even behaves better than yolt go ahead and start using the good old physics then but well and i would really recommend it to right now if you are right now creating your game or you are planning on creating your game go ahead and experiment a little bit with old physics in the repository of it that I'm leaving in the description down below, you can find man much much more tools that actually YOL provides, such as some some other type of of joints, and also as we have seen, it also provides other options and settings that you can modify in the project settings. Okay, it is quite a wide topic, so if you really, really want to see some kind of part two in how to actually use YOL in some kind of practical project, let me know in the comments down below, and I will kindly create it. Subscribe to the channel for more content related to Without, add-ons, plugins, etc. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.